let's flip to page four and talk about those whistleblower rules. I talked about this a little bit earlier, but uh, again, they are they're they're increasing the incentives for internal employees to turn their companies in. Okay, so this is something your board of directors and management team should be aware of because there was a whistleblower rule out there before, but this new rule structure is far, it, it, it's, it's incentivizing more activity. And honestly, I think it's going to create a cottage industry for law firms to go out and actively try to get employees to blow the whistle on their employers, because there are some major incentives here and there's some major protections uh, if an employee decides to be a whistleblower. So let's, let's make sure we understand the concepts here and we're all on the same page. So um, first, what is a whistleblower? And, and you can look at the page there. It is any individual who is providing information related to a BSA violation um, to their employer. So if they're, they're talking to their employer on one hand or to the federal government, okay? So that's how you become a whistleblower. So it, it, it includes compliance and BSA staff. So your BSA team, they can be whistleblowers. If management is doing something that you know could be a violation and they're not doing enough about it, you could have a potential whistleblower on your team. Um, it does not include the information that was derived from an audit, okay? So now why is that? The, the rule still wants to allow auditors to come in and be honest and open about what's going on, and they don't want management to be afraid of what their auditors may or may not know. So if they're getting information through, the, through an audit process, um, then that's, that's, that's a carve-out, okay? What they're looking at are people who are in the programs um, who are blowing the whistle on their management teams. 